Hey everybody, my name is Brandon. Welcome back to Cinefessions, where we talk all things media. So I am really excited about today's video because I am opening yet again another box from Mill Creek Entertainment. So I feel like it has been forever since I put in the request for whatever is in this box and I just don't remember what's in here. So really looking forward to just opening this up and seeing what the heck Mill Creek sent over my way for uh, review or just at least showcasing here on the channel. So let's get into it guys. Before we do though, if you have a second, please hit that like button down below. That engagement really does help me out. But with that said, let's not waste any more time at all. Let's dive right in to the December 2022 releases from Mill Creek Entertainment. All right, let's see. So it feels like there is maybe two things in here. Yeah, DVD, which is kind of heavy. So what could this be? Ah, oh, yes, that's right. I forgot about this. This is Ultraman Kids, which is ridiculous, but this is the complete series of this. So finding fun and adventure wherever they go. These are a lovable bunch of outer space kids on a quest through the galaxy to find their leader, Mars, missing parents. Along the way, they have fun and adventures and even learn a thing or two. So this is in English, uh, subtitles in English. It is in Japanese and it is 11 hours and four minutes. So I'll be honest with you. I got this because I thought my daughter might enjoy it. I didn't realize it was only in Japanese. So obviously she's probably not going to like this one. So this is one that I would have to give a chance just to see if I'll like it or not. I, do I see myself watching 11 hours of Ultraman Kids? I mean, it'd have to be really good for me to want to do that. But hey, it's cool either way. Obviously, you know, kids are, are watching their parents maybe watch Ultraman uh, in Japan, and so they want something for themselves, and that's exactly what this is. So I thought this was cute. I really like the animation style on this. It looks really good. That hand-drawn animation looks great. So yeah, no idea when I'll get around to this one, but this is Ultraman Kids, the complete series. And now let's go and see what this Blu-ray is. It does have a slip cover, so that's good. And we have, oh yes, this is Life Mark. All right, so this is a Dove approved movie and it's inspired by a true story. Hope is at the heart of every journey. Now, Kirk Cameron is in this. So this is one that I actually got because I thought my wife would enjoy watching it. She loves the, uh, whatever those Kirk Cameron movies are, Left Behind. She loves the Left Behind series. Not my thing at all, but hey, to each their own, right? So yeah, I figured she might enjoy this one. An incredible true story that will touch your heart. Uh, so let's see, it says, David's comfortable world is turned upside down when his birth mother unexpectedly reaches out to him, longing to meet the 18-year-old son she only held once with the encouragement of his adoptive parents, played by Kurt Cameron. Uh, David embarks on a journey of discovery that leads to a staggering truth from his past. So it is what it is. I don't know if I'm going to like this one. Like I said, it's not something I'm really looking forward to, but I think my wife might like it. But what's cool is if this is your thing, there are a, a quite a number of special features on here. The Heart of Life Mark, Life Mark Panel Discussion, The Making of Life Mark, The Power of Adoption, Meet the Real People, so obviously the, the people that the movie is based off of, The Beauty of Redemption, The Gift of Elijah, Deleted Scenes, Bloopers, Cast and Crew Music Video, and a Theatrical Trailer. So, I mean, yeah, that's pretty darn good for a Mill Creek release, and it has a slipcover. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. So, yeah, this is, how long is this one? Let's see, this is... There's, oh, it's about an hour and 45 minutes. So yeah, not terribly short, but yeah, is what it is. So that is Life Mark. Let me just make sure. Yep, that's it for the December releases. Now, for some reason, I thought I remembered something about there was like a four pack Blu-ray that was coming out, but either I didn't receive it for whatever reason. Maybe it'll come in a separate package like what happened a couple months ago, or maybe I'm just making it up completely. I don't remember, but yeah, either way, these are the two I ended up getting this month. Ultraman Kids, The Complete Series, and Life Mark. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to watch Life Mark. I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on this one. Hopefully I can get my wife to watch it along with me because it's really who I got it for, and she's a little bit more 
open-minded, I guess, towards what Kirk Cameron is all about. So I'm going to watch that one, like I said, hopefully with her to give kind of her thoughts on it as well. And then I will watch a few episodes of Ultraman Kids. Obviously, I'm not going to sit down and watch all 11 hours right now, but maybe I'll watch an hour or two of this and just see what my initial impressions are on this. Is this something that I think I would go back to or is it something that maybe I didn't really need to add to the collection? I'll let you guys know. So that's what I'm going to set off to do now is give Life Mark and Ultraman Kids some viewing time and then I'll come back and give you guys my thoughts on both of these. And action! Here, let's na, 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 na. Here, let me na, see. Na, na, na. All right, so it is much later, but I finally made my way through these two. So I watched Life Mark and I watched maybe a quarter, a disc of Ultraman Kids. So I have some thoughts there. Frankly, Mill Creek probably would have wished I just did the unboxing with my thoughts on these. So I'm going to start with, you know, let, let's start with Life Mark. So this is. I don't know how to say this without being rude about it, I guess, but it's a it's a pro-life propaganda film, 100%. And what kills me about this movie is that it's not even that bad for three quarters of it. Well, for like, basically, the, except for the last 15 minutes, that's when it turns into this pro-life propaganda infomercial that is just so absurd and ridiculous and not grounded in any sense of reality whatsoever that I just utterly hate this movie. This is dreadful. Up until that point, this was shockingly well acted. Frankly, everybody in this is a genuinely good actor. They do their, they know their craft really well, and they bring a ridiculous amount of uh, emotion to each of the roles, which the movie doesn't really earn the emotion that's given to this. And so, good for the actors. They're very clearly talented, so that's cool. This is a Kirk Cameron production. I don't know what his production company's called. It's like Kirk Cameron Entertainment. So, you know exactly what you're getting here. Cameron stars in this and he produces it, I guess. So, like, you know what you're getting with a Kirk Cameron film. So, outside of, like, the last 15 minutes where it does turn into this infomercial that is just horrendous. It's just horrendously implemented into this otherwise two and a half star film. Like, it's a totally mediocre film, but there is no conflict in this movie whatsoever. We are following our main character who is adopted. It's his 18th birthday, so now he's legally allowed to like contact his birth mother. And so his birth mother tries to reach out to see if he's interested in meeting her. And that's what it is. His parents, played by Kirk Cameron and I'm not sure of her name, but his wife, they are totally all for it. Like they are so excited for him to meet his birth mom. The mom wants to do it. The only small little bit of conflict in the beginning is we're not sure if our main character wants to meet her or not. But it doesn't take a whole lot to convince them that, yeah, maybe that's the right thing to do. And then his dad is a part of this. His, his birth father is a part of this as well. And is he going to meet him or not? There's no conflict, though, because that's resolved super simply as well. Like, there is legitimately no conflict in this movie, which for an hour and 45 minutes, this thing was so slow. There's so many flashbacks in this as well. We start with his like 18th birthday and we go from there, but then it flashes back to the birth parents having their child and deciding to give it up for adoption. And then his adoptive parents deciding that they had uh, two kids that they lost at a very young age. And so they're deciding that they want to adopt or try to adopt again. Uh, and so it's just like all these different things and all these different flashbacks. But again, without any sort of conflict in this, I don't really care. So the technical aspects of this film are really well done. But then those last 15, 20 minutes come in and it's just like all of the goodwill you've built up to this point has just thrown out the window because you're now going to preach to me. And I have zero interest in that whatsoever. My, uh, you know, political beliefs and religious beliefs or non-beliefs aside, you can go about this in a smarter way. You don't have to bash your viewer over the head with it, but that's exactly what the goal of the movie is. That's exactly what the intent of the movie is, is to make a pro-life propaganda film. It, it, you know, it's, it's the demons of pro-choice is, is what they're portraying at the end here. And it's just, I, I hated it because of that. You heard this woman say, Your baby has 10 fingers, 10 toes, please. Don't kill it. Your baby has 10 fingers and 10 toes. Please don't kill it. So I don't know. I, I'm just ranting at this point. I had to cut myself off. But like, this is a movie that is, it has so much potential. There are really great actors, really good cinematographer. The direction is fine. But then the script at the end, it's just like, 
how can you not be any more creative to try to tie this message in a little tighter, to have it be a little bit more impactful, to have it reach a larger audience, someone like me maybe, who is not, uh, you know, who's pro-choice, maybe there's something in here, if you do it in the right way, that makes me think, but this, when it hits the end, I'm tuning out, I don't care, I'm done with it, completely checking out, that movie, is not good. Life Mark is terrible. I am giving Life Mark one out of five stars simply because on the technical side, it is a well-made movie. I'll also mention there are a ton of special features on this. A lot of them are religious based and it's about a movie that I just genuinely hated so I did not spend my time with them. But they're there if you want it. Now, this is a film that is made for a very specific person, and I am not that individual. So I mentioned too, because I talked about it before, my wife, I thought it was one that she might like. She didn't. She said, man, this movie is really slow. And she's a Kurt Cameron fan. So, uh, you know, she didn't enjoy it either. And I wouldn't say that she is exactly the target audience for this either, but she still tends to enjoy these types of movies a lot more than I do. And this one just didn't do it for her either. So unfortunately, Life Mark, I, I could not stand that one. That was just bad filmmaking in my book. So let's move over to Ultraman Kid. So this one is actually subtitled 30 Million Light Years in Search of Mother. And like I said, I watched about a quarter of this one. And this one is fine. This is a, this is a good show, frankly. But I'm not sure who the target audience is for this release in particular. This is a cartoon from uh, like 91, 92. It started off in the mid 80s, I think it was. There was like a short done and then a couple more shorts. It was, they was those were successful, so they ended up making this uh, animated series 26 episodes long. And this is following like the Ultraman characters, but as children. We are following our main character who, interestingly enough, is named Mar, M-A-R, on the back of the box here and on everything that I've read about the series. But in the show, in the subtitles, he's actually Ma, M-A-A. -A. So I'm not sure what the disconnect is there. Same with Tar, T-A-R is actually T-A-A -A in the subtitles. So I don't know what it is, but basically, the entire show is this group of characters trying to find our main characters, mom and dad, because he was separated from them at birth. And so that's what they're trying to do. And each episode uh, that I've, you know, like I said, I made it about a quarter of the way through this. And in each episode, they just, they end up like landing on a new planet. There's kind of a monster of the week thing, but at the end of each episode, the bad guy is not really that bad and it teaches a lesson. This is definitely aimed at a younger audience. It almost gave me like early Pokemon vibes, which I haven't watched a ton of but enough to like make that connection there but the problem with this release is is that there is no English dub there is only Japanese uh, it's only the Japanese language track and then English subtitles so something like my daughter would enjoy this most likely given like the colors and just the wacky characters but she can't watch it because it's in Japanese and she can't read so she can't read the subtitles and the subtitles on this one go by so quickly that you have to be a little bit more of an advanced reader so you're not even going to be able to be like five six seven you probably have to be a little bit older so you can read quicker and so I don't know really who this is for other than Ultraman completionists. If you're a big Ultraman fan, you'll probably want to have this in your collection. And if you happen to be nostalgic for this show for whatever reason, again, I don't even believe this aired in the States, hence no English track. So I'm not sure how you would be, you know, nostalgic for this unless you do happen to be someone watching from Japan. But yeah, so this is not a bad show. It's cute. It's, uh, again, it's like a lesson in every episode, a monster of the week type thing. I thought the animation was, was good for early 90s animation. It did feel a little bit nostalgic just because of the animation type reminded me a little bit of like old Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and things like that but that's just the era that it's from oh one thing I do want to mention is that in one of the episodes they mention Wi-Fi a lot on the ship and in, in my research Wi-Fi was not around until like 1997 this is from 91 92 so I have no idea what's going on my thought is that they're updating that subtitle tract for a more modern audience when it was probably radio in the past, they changed it to Wi-Fi to connect with a modern audience. But typically the reason you do that is because you want the younger, uh, you know, your younger audience members to be able to connect with it more or relate to it more. It's the reason that they changed some of the Animorphs books, right? Get rid of VCRs and add in DVD players so that your younger audience can relate a little bit better. But again, unless you are, you know, a, a, ch a Japanese child or someone, a child who speaks Japanese, 
you're not gonna be able to watch this anyway. So I don't know what the point of updating those subtitles were. So I, it's just it's just odd. So I'll mention this release does have four different discs, and each disc ha uh, disc contains six to seven episodes. So 26 episode series, and it is you know it's all here. So if this is something again that you are nostalgic for, or if you're just an Ultraman completist, then you would want to have this one in your collection. Otherwise. I don't, like, for myself, I don't think I'm going to go back to this and watch the other, you know, 20 episodes that I haven't watched because I just, I don't know, it didn't connect with me on a level like something like Hey Arnold does or uh, Rocco's Modern Life or even as an adult, you can go back and appreciate it and, you know, watch through the episodes. So it is what it is. This is definitely aimed at somebody. I just... The audience feels so small to me that I don't know how successful this release is going to be. Now, that said, this is only like 10 or $11 right now on Amazon, at least as of the time of filming, because there's a coupon for it. So it's normally like $13.99 and then there's like a $2 coupon. So it's pretty cheap right now if you are interested at all. But yeah, so those are my thoughts on those two. Like I said, Mill Creek probably wishes I just stopped at the unboxing, but I wanted to let you guys know what I thought of these. So that's that, I guess. All right, so those are my thoughts on LifeMark and Ultraman Kids. Thank you again to Mill Creek for sending these my way. Just to be clear, like there's an audience for both of these. I just don't happen to be it, which could I have guessed that before I picked these out? Maybe. But again, I really genuinely thought my wife would like LifeMark and I thought my daughter would get a kick out of Ultraman Kids. Unfortunately, they were for neither of them either. So there is an audience for them. I'm just not that audience. Maybe you are. So let me know what your thoughts are. If you plan on picking any of these up or if they're anything that you've seen in the past, let me know what you think of these. Cause again, I'm just one person with one opinion. It doesn't make it right or wrong. It just is what it is. So again, thank you to Mill Creek for sending these over. I really do appreciate that partnership. But as always guys, if you enjoyed this one, please hit that like button down below. That engagement really does help me out. And like I always say, I don't just talk movies or TV series in this case. I talk all things media, books, movies, video games, graphic novels, manga. If it's media related, I'm interested in it. And if you are too, you might consider subscribing. All right, guys. So that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you all next time.